Hello folks, this is Sula speaking. You're listening to another video for Teamfight Tactics. In this game, we're going to be looking at a normal game, not a double up game, although I've mentioned this before, they now include the borders for double up rating in uh, normal games if it's your highest rating. And uh, in this game, we're going to be looking at a team composition that I generally don't play as much. Uh, that is going to be an Olaf team composition. I usually don't play a lot of melee carries, but sometimes the pieces come together. And this is going to be an example of a game called How to Train Your Olaf. <laughs> Alright, so Olaf has been around since the first half of the set. I've done a couple of videos uh, featuring Olaf in, uh, in different parts of this set, or in the first half of the set, in set 7 as opposed to set 7.5. He's a unit that you need to play early, because Olaf is a unit that scales over time. Uh, it is generally not worth going for Olaf unless you have him from the very start of the game. Usually if he pops out of one of the minion orbs is kind of what you'd like to see. Uh, and that's because the biggest mechanic with Olaf is every single time he dies, he gains 5 attack damage permanently. And that's one of the big things that characterizes him. He's one of the units that kind of stacks up over the course of multiple different rounds. So he gains 5 AD every single time that he dies. And he is a melee carry, so... He's going to want to be itemized with typical melee items. Things like Bloodthirster is good on him, Quicksilver Sash is good on him, uh, Titans is good on him, all that sort of stuff. All right, so I am getting set up here, and I took a bow off the initial carousel. I was actually trying to take a bow on an Ezreal, didn't end up getting it. And then I've gotten a rod here. This is going to end up being a two-item start, so I'm actually kind of lucky in that the two items that I've gotten here are actually very lucky items to pair together. The bow plus the rod will be a Rage Blade. At this point in time, I was actually thinking of playing Ezreal. That was kind of my plan for the game, was to play into Ezreal from this start. But just based on having these two items, I was like, all right, well, I'll play Ezreal, and then maybe that can go into Zaya later on. Maybe it could go into Deja later on. The Mirage trait is Executioner's Edge, which is generally seen as being an okay Mirage trait, not amazing. But then it's like, oh, there's an Olaf here, and that is going to be a pivot for my game. I am going to look to play that, and then look what else I get. Combat training. Your champions permanently gain 1 AD every time that they kill an enemy. Um, now, I am going to make one other mistake here at the start of the game. I'm going to end up eventually selling this Silas. I can't remember if it's this round. I believe it is, yeah. I'm going to end up selling the Silas, and that's a mistake because Silas is actually a unit that you play in the Olaf team composition nowadays. I should have taken Olaf, I should have taken that unit and put it on the board and played it. I should have played it over the Wukong because, as I said, Silas is a unit that you play in Olaf's team composition now. You did not used to play him in the first half of the set in set 7, but here in set 7.5 you do play him, so I should have held that unit because I could have started permanently stacking up additional attack damage from the start of the game. Now, it's not terribly significant. It's not the Silas is a mage champion, he deals magic damage, so AD is not that significant on him. But, you know, if he picks up, you know, 20 kills over the course of the match and gets 20 extra AD, that's not bad. Whereas any kills Wukong gets are not going to be relevant because Wukong's going to come out of this team composition eventually. So that is just a little minor mistake that I made. And that's because, again, I haven't played too many Olaf team compositions, too many Olaf team compositions here in the second half of set 7.5. So what is different about the second half of the set? Well, the biggest thing is now there is Pantheon as a champion. Pantheon's traits are Whispers plus Warrior. And because he has Whisper plus Warrior, uh, the Warrior trait will synergize with Olaf. And he's really the best unit to put in to get Warrior Trait. Now, there is the option to play four Warriors, but generally speaking, that is seen as being weaker than playing into four Scale Scorn. So you can play into higher tiers of the Warrior Trait. Olaf's traits are Bruiser plus Scale Scorn plus Warrior, but it's usually better to play four Scale Scorn than to play four Warriors. So most of the time, you're better off um, not looking to put in multiple Warriors. That's because most of the Warrior units are generally not that good, unless you can get up to, like, Yasuo late game. But anyway, typically, we'll play Olaf together with uh, Pantheon. Pantheon will give the Warrior trait to Olaf, and then he also will do some shredding of armor and magic resistance of the enemy team, because he has that Whispers trait. And that's great, because Scale Scorn champs like Olaf actually will do a mixture of physical and magic damage. Now, Olaf's uh, auto attacks only deal physical damage, but the Scale Scorn trait actually gives him magic damage as well, so you do want to get 
sum of both of those. Uh, I will just go ahead and read the scope scoring trait while we've got a minute here. Again, this was around in the first half of the set. It's actually going to get reworked in an upcoming patch. They're going to change this so that scale scoring units can be played with dragons. But when this game was played, it was before they reworked scale scoring. Okay, scale scorings take 20% reduced damage from enemies with more than 1,900 health. So they're kind of like dragon killers. If you don't have a dragon on your team, they also deal a percent of their damage as additional magic damage. So scale scorn 2 is 15% of their damage as additional magic damage. Scale scorn 4 is 50%. So that's why people typically play 4 scale scorn. It goes from 15% to 50%. If you can get up to scale scorn 6, which requires having double scale score emblems, which is really hard to do, it actually doubles up to 100%. That is, they deal 100% of their damage um, also as magic damage. So again, that's super duper powerful, but it's really, really hard to hit that. In any case, this round, I'm going to be up against a player who looks like they're playing a Dragon Mancer board. Looks like they're playing Dragon Mancer Lee Sin. They've already taken the Jeweled Lotus as their first augment. And that's actually a team I'm going to lose against. They have multiple two-star units, so that's a little bit unfortunate. But, ah oh well, is what it is. Here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, have third pick on this carousel. And there's actually something I really want there. There's another Olaf here. There's Olaf with a bow on this carousel, so I was like, oh, I would... Very much like to take that. Please don't take this little little legend. But no, that person takes the jacks with the tears. So I was like, all right, let, let's go. So now I've got another Olaf with a bow. And now I'm really hoping I can find a third Olaf so they'll combine together into Olaf 2-star. That would be a huge, huge buff for me. But uh, I don't want to sell this Olaf to put the bow on the current Olaf because that would just be silly. I definitely don't want to do that. All right, now I get an early, I get a 2% odds uh, Jace here. So I was like, oh, that's pretty good. I think I should probably look to play that unit. And then I also can make a two-star Nasus in my store as well. So I was like, uh, okay. Uh, I'm actually very close to hitting the Shimmer Scale trait as well, which would be kind of interesting to play. I could try to get that in because I have Nasus plus Jax. I actually had a Volibear in my store earlier, and I bought that thinking maybe I could play Shimmer Scale, but then I was unable to um, find the Nasus. So I sold the Volibear. Now the Nasus has come back. And now I don't have the Volo Bear, so I was like, all right, well, probably better off not playing Shimmer Scale anyway. I would I would like to see what the item is, and then that would dictate what I end up playing. If it's Draven's Axe, I would probably want to play that for at least a little while. But if it's something like Dragon Mancer's Staff, that would not really be useful. The one that uh, gives AP would not be useful for this team composition. All right, anyway, so I did unfortunately lose a round, and the timing for that was not great. I went two wins, then a loss, and then um, now I'm looking to potentially win again. Anyway, now there is another Silas in my store, and I can't remember if I remember to pick this up or not. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and play the Nasus because it's going to make Guardian trait in there. And then I've also got the Jace that I can potentially play. Jace, of course, does not make any traits whatsoever, but uh, Jace is just like a generic strong unit to have in. So I think I'm going to end up playing him for right now. And I don't think I end up picking up this Silas either. I think it was a belated... It took me a while to realize that. I was like, oh yeah, I want to play Pantheon. So of course I want to play Silas as well. It was a little slow to pick that up. Like, I could just simply take out the Jax and play uh, Silas over the Jax. Jax is honestly a better frontliner if you don't have the Mage straight in play. But uh, that would give me a unit that I would be playing later on anyway. And again, want to stack up that combat training. So this is a great augment to get if you can get it from the very beginning of the game. And it's really good in a situation like this where you have your carry immediately. And your carry unit is going to be able to get those stacks for the entire game. So I actually have not had Olaf dying very much in these fights. He actually has only died once, the only in the round that I lost. By the way, there I'm going to sell the Wukongs to get to 20 gold, but I do not pick up the Silas, unfortunately. Um, it's actually kind of bad he's only died one time. You actually do want Olaf dying a number of times in these fights. Early on in the game, you actually want him dying in the fights because every time he dies, it's 5 AD. But I'm hopefully overcoming that a bit by um, having the combat training. So every time he kills a unit... He's going to get plus one AD permanently, and I'm going to be checking on that throughout the game. This is pre-recorded footage, so I can't like look at it right now, but the good news is I was very curious while I was playing this game, so I was going out of my way to do that. There's also a mistake here. I should um, put all of the units on the right-hand side except for Olaf on the left-hand side, which will cause him to die to Krugs and get him another death stack, so he could get 5 AD from doing that. And if you're wondering why do I not do that, well, the answer is I was actually had to get up from my computer a bunch of different times. In fact, you might have noticed the little legend was just standing there not doing anything for a while. Um, that's because I <laughs> was actually away from the computer for quite some time there. Uh, and that's because I had to help run some errands. We had to let our dog out and just do some other random stuff. So I was AFK away from computer a fair bit in the early parts of this game. 
And if you're going to see me not scouting and not moving that much, that's actually going to happen a couple different times as well. All right. Well, as far as what I got out of that minion round, I get two items. I get a tear and a glove. And this is actually pretty good because this can make a hand of justice, which is one of Olaf's better items. It's not quite as good as getting the is getting a bloodthirster which is a better uh healing item on olaf but it's certainly not bad it's a pretty good item to get on him just because it's going to give him some extra healing the main reason why you want the, the bloodthirster more is because bloodthirster is going to provide a shield when uh, olaf takes damage he'll get that shield that he, that uh gives him a little bit of extra effective health so hand of is not as good but but certainly not bad so like look at that even though olaf hasn't died a whole lot i think he's died only one time he does have plus 22 so far. So combat training gives you plus 8 flat. You immediately get plus 8. And then he's died once. So that's plus 5. So that's uh, 8 plus 5 is 13. And then he apparently has killed 9 units so far. But uh, later on, he should be able to stack up much, much more. All right. Out of these options here, there's Earth's Grab Bag. There's not really anything I want, though, in terms of Earth's Grab Bag. By the way, here I'm going to get lucky. I'm going to find a Pantheon very early on. So I was like, all right, well, we can just drop the Jace and play the Pantheon. That's much better. Much, much better. By the way, I also get another Graze. I'm getting all these four costs at like 2% odds, 5% odds. Kind of crazy. I would have killed for this in some games. The sad thing is I kind of don't want four costs. I really want three costs. I'm, I'm looking for three cost units. I'm looking for Olaf, Diana, I guess now Silas as well. I think this was the point in time where I was like, oh, yeah, really needed to pick up that Silas, didn't I? Because if I had Silas instead of Jax, I would have Whispers trait in right now. So I was like, mm, yeah, all right. So this was when I realized I had made that mistake. But anyway, this is the biggest change. Or I guess I should back up. There are basically two big changes from Olaf from the first half of the set, uh, set seven, to the second half of the set, set 7.5. So the first big change is that the assassin emblem was removed, well, removed as a makeable emblem from the game. Uh, in the first half of the set, and in fact, in most of the previous sets of Teamfight Tactics, it was the spatula plus glove item would make an assassin spatula. And so everybody just turned Olaf into assassins in the first half of the set. That was like the big thing to do. By the way, I'm actually a little bit sad that Olaf does not die in that fight. I was kind of hoping he would die, but he did end up getting some additional uh, stacks there. I believe he ended up getting some additional stacks. So that was the first thing. No longer, it's. I mean, you can still turn Olaf into an assassin. It is still possible, but you generally have to pull assassin emblem out of Tome of Traits, or I think there's an augment that gives an assassin emblem. You cannot just take a spat. Like if, if, if it was the old first half of the set, I would have just taken that Earth Scrap Bag. I would have taken the spatula, added it to the glove. That would have been assassin emblem. Boom, I've got assassin Olaf. But no, nope, not possible anymore. Now the spatula plus uh, glove is now a Lagoon emblem. So that was like the first big change from the first half of the set. The second big change is that now Pantheon is in the game. Pantheon was not in the first half of the set. So that's the other big change. And so we mentioned that his traits are Warrior plus uh, Whispers, which is really, really nice. By the way, Pantheon dies here. Or excuse me, not Pantheon. Pantheon's still alive. Olaf dies here, but he dies with the Lee Sin on like no health whatsoever. I was like, oh man, I wish he had just survived to kill that unit. Because look how close this fight is. And oh my god, are you kidding me? Oh my god, Ezreal wins on 31 HP, and that's going to interrupt a long win streak for me. I think it was on a four-match win streak, so I was like, oh man. Plus, it's not even enough to knock me out of uh, a last pick on the carousel. I was would have been last pick on the carousel regardless, so that's pretty disappointing to lose that match by such a close margin. Uh, probably should have taken the Hand of Justice and just put it on Olaf. If I'd had Hand of Justice, I would have won that fight. All right, now there were three bows on this carousel, so I really was hoping I could get another bow here. But guess what? Every single one of them gets taken. I was like, ah, geez. And then I wanted the sword, but that gets taken. So I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm getting a cloak here. This is the downside sometimes to when you are last pick. Sometimes you just get no choice. But uh, this is not all terrible because, remember, I'm able to take a Silas off the carousel, and I do want to play Silas. Now, if I had picked up those other Siluses, I'd actually have Silas 2-star because I had two Siluses in my store earlier, so I actually could have had Silas 2-star here. I mean, yes, these shop odds change, obviously, when you take units out of the pool, but... Uh, for sake of argument here, I could theoretically have had two-star Silas, which would have been nice. My board is mostly one-stars. I guess I have one two-star Nasus and two-star Sedge, but like Nasus is not a key unit in this team composition. I'm still looking for Diana. I would like to find at least one Diana so I can make Diana two-star. Or excuse me, so I can uh, look to play four scale scoring. If I can't find a Diana by the end, by the beginning of stage four, I will have to roll for the unit. 
And it looks like I'll probably have to roll at least some gold on seven, but we'll see. I would really, really, really like to find another Olaf. Remember, I got the one Olaf out of the minion stage, and then I took another Olaf off Carousel. So I have not seen a single one in my shops yet. By the way, this fight is very close, but uh, looks like looks like Deja's going to win this. I don't think Sage Sejuani's going to beat Deja. Gets the stun off, but not no, not quite. At least Pantheon got a kill or two there. Farming up those uh, kills. And, of course, Olaf got more death stacks as well, so that's not bad. All right, well, there's the Diana, so that's nice. I can pick up the Diana in the store. Again, if you're wondering why am I not reacting, why am I not doing anything, why have I not repositioned my units like the last two rounds, again, I was actually like running back and forth from my computer here um, doing some different quick errands. But after this, I believe I was able to get back and uh, be a little bit more fully engaged in the game. So yeah, no Olafs have popped up in the store just yet. Only minion rounds and carousels. So really, really, really want Olaf to pop up. Uh, I also think I probably should have just made the Hand of Justice. I think I was holding out for Olaf to potentially make like a Bloodthirster, but that was a little bit silly. Look at how much I've wasted by not making an item with these two, uh, not making a, a finished item with these two components. I've had the components for Hand of Justice sit on the bench literally the entire stage, all of stage three. And that's pretty wasteful. Remember, the whole game usually lasts about 20 to 25 rounds. Typically, it's five five PvP rounds per stage, so like stage two, three, four, five, and six. Usually, the match ends somewhere in stage six. So, like that's 20 to 25 rounds. I had these two items sit here doing nothing for a full five rounds. That's pretty wasteful. So, anyway, I actually end up losing that. I'm actually on a three match losing streak, which is a little bit like ooh, because I got off to that great early start. But I have lost three rounds in a row, and it's not surprising that this is the case. Look at my board. Um, pretty much everything's one-starred, and I don't have, like, I have a decent amount of traits in, but I don't have four scale scoring in, which is a big jump. And I still have one-star Olaf, I still have one-star Pantheon, I still have one-star Silas. Like, I need to make these units stronger. At least I have gotten some death stacks for Olaf, which is not terrible. And I'm going to farm another one here. I am actually at the computer here, so I can have Olaf farm a death stack against the wolves pretty easily. And now I'll be able to get to level 7. And I definitely need to roll on level 7 a little bit. And ah, there we go. I get a bow from that minion round. That's quite good. So because I don't have 2-star Olaf, I need to get 2-star Olaf. Or else I'm just going to get take way too much damage here. So I need to roll and I need 2-star Olaf. I actually get double Jaces, which is kind of interesting. But that's not what I'm looking for here. Also get a Zoe, which is kind of interesting. Again, not what I'm looking for here. So I need I need to hit these 3 costs. It's like, okay. Well, I am actually am hitting units here, but I'm not hitting the Olaf. I need to find one more Olaf. Because I need to combine this bow together with the Olaf items I already have. I'm like, come on, man. Come on. Can we find one more Olaf? And there we go. Finally. Jeez. I had to roll an awful lot of gold there. So anyway, now I will be able to finish itemizing Olaf. I needed to find that last Olaf so that I could go ahead and get that bow that was on the second Olaf on my bench to combine into Rapid Fire Cannon. So now I've got my Olaf items, and I'm quite happy with the ones I have. This is maybe not absolute best in slot, but it's certainly not bad. I have the Rage Blade, so he'll ramp up over the course of the fights. I have Rapid Fire Cannon, which is more attack speed. Olaf's an auto attack based champion. And uh, it's also really crucial because it gives him plus one range. It makes him much safer. He's much less likely to get crowd controlled. And then I need a healing item because I don't have any healing. I don't have like Celestial Blessing. I don't have Thrall the Hunt. So Hand of Justice gives him healing. All right, our last augment is in, and oh, it's a Prismatic op option. Now, you might be tempted to take Warrior Crown, which again would not be terrible, but. Look at this, Cavalier Unity. The Cavalier trait guarantees bonus to all your champions. This does not increase your number of Cavaliers. So this is a really interesting augment. As I said, it is prismatic. It was originally gold, but it was incredibly overpowered as a gold augment. What this does is it means all of your non-Cavalier units get treated like Cavaliers. So this means Olaf, Pantheon, Silas, they basically will get the, the Cavalier bonus. They're going to get the extra armor and magic resistance, and they're going to get the ability to charge towards uh, enemy units uh, at the start of combat and then whenever they kill something. That is very, very nice indeed. So I will go ahead and take that, and this is going to make this another very unique game because I have both combat training and I also have Cavalier Unity. So now the path is clear. I thought about uh, potentially staying here at level 7 and then rolling to try to hit my um, 3-star units to try to 3-star Olaf, try to 3-star Diana. But number one, I am not close to, to Olaf 3-star whatsoever. And number two, with Cavalier Unity on my board, I want to get in another Cavalier because I want to pass on that benefit to my unit. So I'm going to go level 8 and then I'll look to slow roll at level 8 and see if I can 3-star the units there. But I 100% want to get another Cavalier unit in because the benefit does go up a pretty good amount. And the obvious next Cavalier to put in, by the way, look at that, plus 59. 
<laughs> plus 59 on the stacks there. Uh, but the obvious next unit to put in is Hecarim because his ult's going to be very, very convenient as well. Hecarim ult, uh, that great crowd control, really useful for a melee composition like this because it just buys time for Olaf to keep auto-attacking. But anyway, I had to roll an awful lot of gold there, and that's pretty unlucky. Remember, I got an, an Olaf on the minion round on stage 1-4, and then I took one off Carousel. I did not see a single Olaf until uh, until I rolled, what, like 40 gold on stage 4-1? So, like, to have not found any more Olafs in a lobby where literally no one else is playing Olaf is pretty unlucky. Now, I have to start everything on my board except Pantheon. So, it's not as though I didn't hit anything. Like, it's not as though I was super unlucky in that regard. But it is a little bit disappointing that I was not able to... Uh, I was not able to find one more Olaf earlier, so I could have stopped rolling there, gone to level 8, and then looked to slow roll at level 8 with uh, 3 Cavalier as opposed to 2 Cavalier. This person is playing Mirage. Remember, the Mirage trait is Executioner's Edge in this game, and they were actually on a pretty big win streak because they already have 2-star Deja, but wow, we absolutely slaughtered that team. It was not even remotely close, just absolutely dumpstered them. The scary thing, though, is they have 3... They took loaded dice, and they have not used the loaded dice yet. So if they're able to get, like, three-star Deja, that's going to be really scary. Or, if they, I mean, like, even three-star Nunu would make them a lot scarier. They'll also have good odds to find Yasuo as well. So they probably want to get up to level eight and then look to use the loaded dice either on Deja or maybe on Yone. Because Yone's, you know, Yone's two traits are Mirage plus Warrior. So they'd have very good odds to find Yasuo if they use the loaded dice there. All right, anyway, so it's my turn to go ahead and pick here this not really anything that I want that badly. I'm just going to go ahead and take this sword because I think it's more useful than any of these other options. And I'm probably just going to put that on Pantheon because Pantheon becomes the secondary carry in this team composition. I'm still trying to get up to level 8, but I can't do that until the end of the stage, not without torching my economy. So uh, I don't feel like I need to do that. I did get much stronger by two-starring my board. You notice I have um, been winning all the rounds since I did that. If I was on like 20 HP, then yes, I'd go level 8 here and keep rolling. But uh, I think I can be more patient. I think my board's quite strong. I just beat the person who was win streaking in the lobby. And uh, I think I'm content to play a little bit more slowly, go to level 8, and then hopefully slow roll a bit at level 8 in the hopes of finding more Olafs. At least I'm at 5 Dianas, but uh, yeah, I'm not, not doing great there as far as Olaf. Still just on the three Olafs. Okay, this person's playing a Tempest board. They have taken Verdant Veil, which is the you can't get crowd controlled for their um, for their Prismatic Augment. So they do have an Al Shin, but like, look, I, we just managed to torch this team and cut right through them before Al Shin even gets to ult. I don't like how they have their pant their um, Graves positioned. You really want Graves not to get um, aggroed on in these fights, but like, I was able to position so that Olaf just instantly attacked uh, Olaf just instantly attacked the um, the Graves from the very beginning of the fight. So Graves got no time to scale up in the fights whatsoever. Now I see a Hecarim in the store, so that's great. As soon as I hit level 8, I'll just put in the Olaf. And as I've mentioned, the Cavalier benefit does go up pretty substantially with every rank in the trade here. Right now, Cavalier 2 is 30 armor, 30 magic resistance. It goes up to 45 armor, 45 magic resistance. Now that might not sound like that much, but remember that does get tripled every time that the uh, units charge, which is literally every single unit on my board. So you're going from like uh, 90 armor, 90 MR to almost 150 armor, 150 MR. So that's a pretty big increase. All right, this is another dragon board here. Looks like they have an Alshin in the back lines. Otherwise, I'm not exactly sure what they're playing here. And Olaf is continuing to just murder everybody with these items. Again, the RFC is super duper nice. Giving him two range instead of one range makes a huge difference. And look at him getting stacked up. He's at set plus 70 damage right now. He's almost doubled the damage he's dealing with all these stacks. And mostly it's been from killing things, which is pretty, pretty obscene here. All right, so now it's time to go to Treasure Dragon. There's not all that much that I really want here. Uh, by the way, there was also, I, I have to mention this because this did factor into my decision. There was, This is a normal game, remember. And uh, there actually was a little incentive that uh, if you rerolled the Treasure Dragon four times, you got um, pass XP for the little TFT pass. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I rolled this at least four times so I could get that extra pass XP. But I was also looking for better items, and there were some things I wanted here. So I'm going to go ahead and take Protector's Val. This is a good frontliner item. It wouldn't be bad on um, wouldn't be bad on Silas. It wouldn't be bad on Hecarim. But I'm going to put this on Pantheon because I think it's a little bit better on Pantheon. And then I've got this leftover sword. Remember, I took the sword off the last carrot, so I wasn't exactly sure what to do with it. But I was like, you know what? Zeke sounds pretty good. Let's go ahead and put that on. And then I've got these leftover components. I could try to re-roll one of them. 
Honestly, I think maybe I should have tried to re-roll the glove. Because I didn't really have anything to do with this glove. I could have, like, re-rolled the glove. And then if I didn't like the options, I could have, like, um, fallen back on Rage Blade. But I was like, all right, uh... I kind of look like a more tanky. I don't want Pantheon, but I think I'll just make the Rage Blade. Pantheon does scale up over the course of the fight. So this is not a terrible item on him, but I would have preferred a healing item, honestly. I actually think a healing item would have been very good to get on him. Or something like Titan's Resolve would be really nice too. But just something so that he can keep sustaining over the course of the fights. That said, I'm still pretty happy with this. The Protector's Vow is a good item. The uh, Zeke's gives Olaf even more attack speed, so he can just ramp up that much faster. And Olaf is just tearing through people right now. By the way, we finally get another Olaf. That was a great store, by the way. They got a second Hecarim, a second Pantheon, and a second and a, and a fourth Olaf. So I'm pretty happy with that. I am win streaking right now, but again, people should start to outscale my comp because obviously I'm not close to three star Olaf or three star Diana. So I'm kind of like capped out at the moment. The one thing that's helping me keep going is Olaf is getting stronger in every single fight as he continues to kill people. He is slowly getting stronger in every single fight because he's he's picking up like four or five or six kills in every one of these fights. He's, he's the one getting almost every single kill on my team. And again, this is another reason why the combat training is so, so nice to have on him. Like, okay, in the early game, it wasn't really doing that much, but man, it's doing a lot right now. He is my clear carry, and he just gets stronger and stronger with every single fight. So, all right, can he cut through this? Now, remember, I also do have Ascension, so if I can survive long enough... Oof, by the way, I finally take a loss there, and my win streak gets interrupted. By the way, that person's on 8 rels, so that's kind of scary. 8 rels, and I believe they're also on 7 Aphelioses, and I think they have 6 Nomsies. So yeah, Witch Streak finally comes to an end. But hey, I do get another Death Stack, so that's not nothing. I do get, <laughs> do get another 5 AD. So even when I lose the fights, it's not the end of the world. I do still get a little bit stronger. Looks like the Mirage player also has used their loaded dice. And I think they found, now they're on like 8 Nunus or something like that. We've also had people getting knocked out of the lobby. So like each one of these rounds, there's been a lot of these rounds where I could be up against like 4 or 5 different boards which has limited how much positioning I can do. This person has a Force of Nature, or Tactician's Crown, the official name, and they also have a uh, Nico's Help, or a Champion Duplicator. Wow, I'm going with all the old names here. So I would definitely like to knock this person out of the lobby before they can two-star their Swain, or two-star their, I think they had an Aurelian Soul in the back line, but yeah, I'm just gonna knock them out of the lobby. They were not especially strong. They were close to being strong, but they weren't there yet. And so we're on we go. We're just going to keep scaling as the lobby goes down to just four players now. So as far as items on these carousels, there's not, again, a ton that I really want or need at this point in time. Definitely different things that I could look to try to find. Uh, out of these options, I should take the Pantheon. That will make Pantheon two-star, and Pantheon's the most important unit that I have that is not two-starred. Instead, I, for whatever reason, I don't spot it, and I take the Hecarim. Now, this is not terrible. It does make Hecarim two-star, but uh, I should have taken the Pantheon. It would have made Pantheon two-star. The Morellos would have popped off, and then I could have put the Morellos on another unit. And there's actually a very good unit to put it on, which is Hecarim. Hecarim applies Morellos quite well. Now that said, I don't have a great need for Morellos for the healing debuff, and that's because Pantheon's ability actually is already a healing debuff. So yeah, those who might not be aware of this, this is one of the things that's easy to miss if you're not reading all the ability descriptions, but Pantheon's ability is a healing debuff. Uh, his ability is Aegis Assault. Pantheon uh, braces his shield for two seconds, doubles the effectiveness of his passive. He passively gets damage reduction. Um, he deals physical damage in the area in front of him. Enemies hit have their incoming healing reduced by 50% for three seconds. So it's not a long healing cut, it only lasts three seconds, but um, it is a heal cut on the team. Would be helpful in situations like this. By the way, I actually thought I was going to lose this fight because this person has hit Nunu 3-star, and I thought that that would just go ahead and chomp my uh, Olaf, but no, I actually end up winning the fight. I think that's because Diana was well positioned, and Diana got right on top, uh, was able to get right on top of uh, the Deja in the back lines, and that helped quite a bit. Alrighty. By the way, this person's on 8 Namzi, so I kind of like them not to hit their Namzi 3-star, and they're on 8 Rels as well. So another person that's very close to getting strong, they also took Loaded Dice. Uh, and by the way, with them taking all those Namzis out of the pool, it really should not be this hard to hit Olaf 3-star. I'm guaranteed to hit them here, so I'm hoping I can just beat them and knock them out of the lobby, but ugh. They got the Namzi 3-star. It's kind of near Namzi in this lobby, just FYI. So can we manage to beat this person and knock them out of the lobby before... Oh, they actually sold all their rels. Interesting. They were on eight rels. They sold all their rels to hit three-star Namzi. That is a fantastic Hecarim ultimate. It's going to lock up the enemy team for quite a while. Now it's like, all right, Olaf, can you get through the rel? Can you get over to that Namzi? 
Uh, he's got that plus one range, which is super duper nice. And now he's on the Namzi. Come on, Olaf, can you do this? And well, there we go. Well, that person's just out of the lobby. I guess three star Namzi wasn't good enough. And he's at plus 94 damage. By the way, there's a Namzi popping up in the store immediately. So again, I'm at 50 gold. I'm just going to slow roll here until I'm in more danger of like getting knocked out of the lobby. There's no immediate need to get too aggressive here. Unfortunately, the three costs that I'm taking out of the pool are kind of not clustered in the way that I want them to. Look at this. I've got five Dianas, I've got five Olafs, and I've got five Silas's. It's like I'm getting exactly even numbers of all of them, which is not what you want. You want them to cluster so you have like you know, eight Olafs and four Silas's, not five, five, five. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess that's better than not finding any Olafs at all, but still, it's not not quite the way I want this to be. I'm going to pick up some three costs. By the way, there is, there's six Olafs. We're getting closer. And there's six Dianas, but it's like, it's the same thing again. It's like, ah, come on here. So I'm going to roll and, well, I do hit Pantheon two stars, so that's nice. And we'll stop here because we're at 49 gold. And uh, I'll go ahead and put this Quicksilver Sash on the... Um, on the Silas. I, by the way, I do have a Reforger, but I'm actually reasonably pleased with all the items I have. The only one that I would really look to Reforge would be the Archangels on Hecarim. It's not a particularly good item on Hecarim, but uh, it does cause him to cast a little bit earlier. So, like, it does have Mana Generation on it, and that causes him to cast earlier in the fight, which is good. So, I'm actually okay with that, even though it's not an amazing item per se. Anyway, so this fight's all about can we get on that Deja, can we get through the Nunu. Now, I have been beating this team the last couple times I hit it, but Olaf is up against the three-star Nunu. He's the only one left alive. He actually is going to kill most of these units, but we were not able to get on Deja, and I think the difference in that fight is, uh, uh, yeah, just was not able to get on the uh, Deja and burst it down, unfortunately. So like I said, my comp is starting to get outscaled, and that's a disappointing roll down there. I don't really hit much of anything. So that's like 10 gold rolled and nothing hit, which is... Rather unfortunate. Anyway, I think I'm going to be up against the Graves player this round. Yeah, I'm up against the Graves Alshin player. Fortunately, that person's only on one Alshin. As long as they're on one star Alshin, it's not that scary. So I'm going to reposition over here. Again, I want to pull aggression onto Graves immediately at the start of combat. And I really don't think this person should be playing Graves on the front line. I, I really think he's better off in the back line where he does not get aggroed instantly at the start of the fight. Because Graves is another champ that scales up over the course of the fight, but... uh. Yeah, that, that doesn't happen. He just dies in about two seconds. So I don't think that's the best positioning right there. Uh, the Alshin is going to get the cast off, but uh, we're not going to die that quickly. Like that Alshin one star is not going to wipe the board. So uh, we, we just trash everything else and get on the Alshin, and that's that. Again, I'm trying to take these three costs out of the pool to roll here. Again, I'm still looking. All right, well, there's another Diana, and I can roll a bit more. And there's another Silas, but again, it's like, oh, come on. Why, why are these units... Why am I getting exactly equal numbers of these units? It's 6, 6, and 7. It's like, oh my god, why Why can't they cluster a little bit more and get me an actual 3-star unit? Ah, uh, jeez. So it looks like I'm up against the Mirage player this round. And they do have 2-star Yasuo, so that's pretty scary. Got 2-star Yasuo. They also shifted their Deja over to the left-hand side at the last second. So that was noteworthy that this person was willing to swap their units at the last second. They're also stacking... Uh, zippies for some reason. Not exactly sure why. I don't think that you want to play that heavily into Vertical Guild personally, but oh well. So once again, Yasuo is going to get off a nice ultimate, knock uh, Olaf up into the air, and it looks like this is a lost fight, but uh, oh, hold on. Wait a second. Wait a second. Olaf's still alive, but uh, nope. Deja gets off one more uh, Wind Blast. It's not quite enough, but I mean, that was close. That was close. Now, look at this. There's a Cavalier Emblem. I'm like, oh my god, there's a Cavalier Emblem. That would be so amazing for me. That would give everyone on my team a rank of Cavalier Unity. But no, not to be. Uh, the other person wants it. And they're actually going to make two-star Cap... Uh, they're going to make Yasuo with... Uh, two-star Yasuo with a Cavalier Emblem. I was like, yeah, they're going to slap that on Yasuo, aren't they? And they're actually running five Cavaliers on their board right now. So I was like, ah, jeez. Why, why do we all want to play the Cavaliers so badly? Oh, man. Anyway, so we're getting close to the end of the game. I was like, you know what? There's not that much time left in the game. Now I'm just going to roll it down and see if I can hit my three stars. So, like, again, I'm rolling here. I'm rolling. I'm rolling. I'm going to get another Diana. But, like, again, I've got seven Olafs. I've got eight Olafs, eight Olafs, eight Dianas. I was like, are you kidding me? Is that good? And that's seven Silas's. Are you freaking kidding me? What is going on here? Oh, my God. So <laughs> I have eight, eight Dianas, eight Olafs. Seven Silas's. I was like, ah, jeez. Are you? How, why am I getting exactly equal numbers of all these units? 
All right, well, I wasn't able to get a useful item. It was not as good as getting a Cavalier emblem, to be sure. I could have gotten four Cavalier unity on everyone, but I did get a useful item in the Protector's Vow. So I actually have double Protector's Vows now, which is pretty nice. So Olaf, he's just Olaf and Deja, and this time Olaf's going to win the fight. There we go. So yeah, we're going to knock that player down to uh, probably one life left. And then look at this. Are you freaking kidding me? Eight Silas's, eight Diana's, eight Olaf's. What is going on here in this shop? Can I hit any of these? Okay. So I do hit this. I hit the least important of the three. I hit the Silas. Uh, he's actually probably slightly more important than Diana. So I was like, all right, well, three star Silas. That should help, right? That should definitely be better. I also thought that I would reposition so Olaf was over on the left hand side. I thought that would probably be better. I actually mispositioned. I wanted to get the Hecarim over there as well. I moved the Sedge instead. So I was like, all right, I think it's better to be on this side because then he'll run into the back lines and go after the. Uh, the Deja, right? Right? Isn't he going to go into the back lines and go after Deja? Well, he's on Yasuo, which is not terrible, but it looks like he's pulled aggression from Deja a little bit earlier than I want. So he's still working his way through Yasuo, but oh, okay. Well, that, that did not work. Uh, for whatever reason, being positioned on the right-hand side ended up being better. And so now I'm going to go down to 20 HP, and I'm like, Jesus, I've got, <laughs> I have eight Olaf's, eight Dianas here. Are you kidding me? So I'm hoping that I can hit these units. If I don't hit Olaf and I run out of gold, at least I do get one more round to do this. If I don't hit the Olaf on my roll down, I can sell the Dianas and roll. That gives me like another, what, like another 15 gold or so to roll with? Something around there. I'm also going to get a useful item in the Chalice. So that's not terrible either. I could put that on Diana and then have her stand next to Olaf. But I'm like, ah, oh, come on, man. <laughs> I've been rolling here for ages and ages. Spend an awful lot of gold. We'll actually hold the Rakan because it takes a three-cost unit out of the pool. So it's like, come on. Come on. There we go. All right. Well, that was fast. And oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. So the game was finally like, yeah, all right. You deserve this. You deserve this. And look at this. Wow. 245 damage plus 120 stacks. I was like, okay. Well, the last fight I did lose, but now I have three-star Olaf and three-star Diana and three-star Silas. I guess I technically had three-star Silas for the last round as well. All right, that should make the difference, right? So I did better with Olaf on the right-hand side for whatever reason. So let's just go ahead and try that. So I'm going to put him on the right-hand side again. This time, the, the Deja is also on right-hand side. And they actually got a useful item, too. They got Hand of Justice for their Yasuo, so that's pretty good. But I do have three-star Olaf now, so he did get a lot stronger. And I also have three-star Diana right now. Um, so yeah, Olaf is chopping, chopping, chopping. He's on the Nunu, and it looks like Pantheon is in the back lines. Pantheon's trying to kill the Deja. Is he gonna do it? No, he comes up just short, but Olaf's still alive, and that's that. GG. So yeah, Pantheon and Diana almost managed to kill the Deja. They fall just short, but we got three-star Olaf. We don't hit him until 7-1, which is very late, but, uh, hey, we got him. We got the Olaf, and that was enough to get the win in this particular round. Interesting game. Cavalier Unity plus Combat Training Olaf made for a very distinctive game, not one I've played before. So I hope this one was entertaining to watch. By the way, it wasn't just Olaf getting combat stacks. Everyone else on the team was getting them too, just not as many. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope this was a fun video. Until next time, hope you guys are having a great week. Take care.